Hello and welcome to Tech24. I'm Rebecca Bowring. Coming up in the program, China has a billion mobile phone users and a fifth of the world's online population. Its e-commerce industry is due to outstrip the US by 2015. So how can Western firms grab a slice of the action? And what's next for China's march into foreign tech markets? Bullets and booze in Brazil. Washed up cop Max Payne is back with a new Sao Paulo adventure. Rockstar's third person shooter promises an adrenaline frenzy. We'll score the graphics and the gameplay in Test 24. China's technology scene has never looked so enticing to the West. China lays claim to the world's biggest telecoms market. Today, one in five web users is Chinese. Online retail generated over $120 billion in 2011 and is set to triple in three years. A potential gold mine then, but notoriously difficult to access. Facebook, Twitter and eBay have never made it. Google was forced to compromise. Apple's going strong, but Android handset makers are in a bear pit. Mark Edwards joins me on the show this week. Mark, you know the Chinese market well. Why is it so difficult for Western companies to get a foot in the door? Well, I think there are probably two main things. The first one is legislation. Essentially, a Western company has to be able to get into bed with a Chinese company just because it will help. It will facilitate the process of actually getting their product out into the, uh, into the wider Chinese market. And the second, and the one that I think is probably more important in that a lot of companies actually don't do enough with this, is cultural nuances. Um, a Western company needs to understand it can't just plonk its uh, westernized model chuck it in the middle of China and hope that it'll work. That's not the way. It really needs to go deep, understand what the Chinese market and the Chinese consumer in particular really, really wants from their product. Now, some companies have been quite good at navigating these cultural nuances. I recently spoke to Dan Safati. He's the founder and CEO of the French professional social network Viadio. Its offshoot, Tianji, has gone on to become China's number one resource for business people. I asked him how to crack a sometimes hostile market. What we did is acquiring the local leader. That was in 2008. That was one. Two is giving them the right autonomy. I'm, I'm living now in China. It's been now almost a year I'm living there. I can tell you that out of 120 people there in Tianji, there are maybe two guys speaking English. So it's really local. It's run and managed by local people. And, and that's, I think, the key of our success in China. Evernote, the US note-taking application, has just launched a dedicated Chinese service called Yinxiang BG. They say downloads of the Chinese app are, quote, off the scale. So, Mark, it looks like they're onto something here, running a parallel service. That's the thing. I think they've been very, very intelligent. They've understood that you can't simply just come in, drop your, you know, the international way. They've actually set up a... Um, uh, an offshoot of their company in Beijing, developing with Chinese developers. And it's not just their app translated into Chinese. That's not what they're doing. What they've actually got is open it out the floor to Chinese web developers and app developers so they can add open source and add onto their existing program. So they've really, and, and the entire team is made up of Chinese people. So they are, they've got it. They've understood cultural nuances and the differences between Western and Chinese consumers. Just briefly though, these partnerships don't always work, do they? We've got the US web giant Yahoo effectively divorcing from uh, Alibaba, the e-commerce uh, website. They've had all manner of disputes over things from censorship to uh, online payments. And also uh, eBay, another monolith, as it were, of e-trading, never got anywhere. Well, two slightly different stories. Yahoo, I mean, you know, when you... Uh get into bed with your mistress, make sure that your wife never finds out. And unfortunately for uh, Yahoo, that happened with this whole scandal around uh, they allowed internet users, uh, they allowed the, the passcodes and, and gave away some sensitive information from dissident activists. And they got a lot of, lot of trouble uh, for that back in, back in the US. Now, eBay is, is a fantastic example of how really not to, uh, to set up a company in China. They had everything. They bought 80% of the market by buying a local uh, goods sharing company there. They had it all and they didn't understand the Chinese. The main thing they needed to do was not to charge, not to charge people to put their goods onto the website. And also they were told they needed a, an instant messaging system, which they didn't adhere to. Taobao did adhere to and they now have completely wiped the market clean. And so it was also a way for buyers and sellers to build up trust, I guess, and also perhaps to haggle a bit, which is much more of a way of doing business in China than it is in the West. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Mark. Stay with us. We'll be talking slow flying bullets in Test24.
Double-crossed and a long way from home, Max Payne has hit rock bottom. The former NYPD cops wound up in Sao Paulo for the third title of his eponymous video game series. The third-person shooter, Certificate 18, is published by Rockstar Games for PC, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. It's already out in the US and Europe. Mark, it sounds pretty gritty. He's not a happy man, is he, Max Payne? No, no, I think that's the first thing you realise when you uh, when you when you play the game. I mean, it, it's it's visceral. Uh, you, you find out straight away the first thing you find out about Max, poor guy, alcoholic, drug addict, so he's not having a great time, but that's the point, you're into this story, and you know, it's a good 10 minutes before you start even playing the game, um, because they want to get you into the storyline, Rockstar Games, big studio, big production, and that's what they've gone, they've done, used a very Hollywood script, and you know, you are the star of, of, of a film, and you're really catapulted into a story. It's not so much, I mean, they veered away from their open world uh, yeah, gaming. Yeah, it's a departure for them, isn't it? It is, you know, they're, they're bread and butter with Grand Theft Auto and L.A. Noir going around a huge open world set. Now, what they've done here is a third person shooter, pure and simple. You're in your very first scene, kidnapping, you're in Sao Paulo, you're looking after in a sort of security detail, looking after a family, kidnapping, and you're jumped in, and the first thing you have to do, slow-mo bullet. Doo. Yes, tell us about this. How does that work? Does it actually enhance the gameplay? It, I mean, it really does. You, you, you think yourself some, some real action hero, because ultimately you have time to line up a shot and bang, and uh, and really go for those. It is an so it's 18. It's not like mindless shooting. Though. No, no, no. Well, it is, but you'll <laughs> die very fast if, it, if, uh, if, if you keep doing that. But yeah, it's uh, it adds a lot of layers, and you need that, because ultimately all you're doing is going around shooting a lot of people. So, what about uh, the storyline, though? Because some people have criticised it for being too complicated, too many flashbacks. I think that what, what, what they've really done is they've, they've attempted to say, look, we're creating a film that's also a video game. And that's what you get from it. You know, you'll be out of breath when you finish the game. You'll be absolutely out of breath because it's, it's an experience. It's visceral, it's guttural. Uh, it's all, you know, you're immersive, you're in there. And uh, you get to kill a lot of people as well. It is rated 18, so uh, what, there is a lot of blood. What the, about the Mark Edwards uh, School 24 then? What do you give it? Um, I'm going to give for Max Payne 3 from Rockstar Studios, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It's a great game. Oh, could have gone, to, Yeah, it could have gone to 9 if it had really added a bit more to the gameplay that's not just going around shooting, but the storyline and the soundtrack. Enough for an eight. It's a good game. It's worth it. I'm not sure it's my cup of tea, though, to be honest. Probably but I'm not. glad you enjoy feeling like a, a hero. Right, that's just about it from the Tech 24 team for now. Thanks very much for watching this edition of the show. Thank you very much to you, Mark Edwards, for being with us. Get in touch with us via the social network, of course. The URL will be coming up in the corner of your screen. And you can follow us on Twitter at TechF24. We end this week with a visual rendering of the saying, my life flashed before my eyes. This advert for Getty Images flips through 873 photos at a rate of 15 per second. It takes just a minute to tell one whole life story.